These are two different watches at two completely different price points. Now, to those people who aren't really watch experts or people who don't have that much of, you know, of an expertise when it comes to watch knowledge, does a watch really have to be expensive? What differs a really expensive watch from, let's say, a budget-friendly watch? Welcome back to the local watch guy channel. If you're new to this channel, I am a watch collector, enthusiast, lover of all sorts of watches, and I'll be showing you an interesting comparison today between these two watches. Now, I understand that this isn't a really a fair comparison. However, a lot of people will always question to why certain watches cost a lot. And there isn't really a particular answer. A lot of people may tell you, you know, it will take a long time to produce a watch, the mechanisms are complex, uh, let's say the material is different if a watch is polished to a certain extent, whilst these stuff are a reasonable explanations to why certain watches do cost a lot, it still may baffle some people. And the reasons that I mentioned will still leave some people confused and not really convinced enough to be spending so much money on a watch. Now, I'll be going over the major differences to what makes a $30 watch special and why this watch will cost approximately $12,000. I will be comparing a $30 watch with a $13,000 watch. Obviously, this is a Rolex and this is a Casio. I know it's not a fair comparison, but then again, I just wanted to show you the main differences between these watches and what makes them so special. And you know what they say, you know, a watch or a good watch is not defined by its price tag. But let's go over the quick specs and see the differences between these watches. So this Casio has the reference MTP-V006L-1BUDF, a very complex, reference number and the explorer 2 has the reference number 216570 that's it i believe the rolex wins in terms of model number just simply because it's more short and simple the dial window or the material that's put on the watch face is obviously mineral glass and it is tough to an extent however it is not as scratch resistant as sapphire crystal which is on the rolex over here and obviously the cheaper the watch the less likely you will be finding that sapphire crystal is used as the watch face so the case diameter is 38 millimeters case thickness is only nine millimeters the band material is leather and the band width is 18 millimeters so you're going to find a lot of custom straps for this watch and obviously it has the nice black dial and the black strap. I love black watches just simply because they can be worn with a suit and especially this watch. I've actually worn this watch uh, with a suit and it just looks absolutely amazing. And it tells the time and shows you the day and the date. And to me, that's just perfect. The watch is water resistant up to 30 meters. So that's actually not that bad for its price considering it is $30 only. When we come to the Rolex Explorer 2, obviously the watch is 42 millimeters in diameter. The watch is water resistant up to 100 meters, and that is very impressive. So Rolex's most common uh, bracelets are the Oyster bracelet and the Jubilee. Obviously, the Explorer uh, Mark II and the Explorer II both come in the Oyster bracelet with the Oyster steel, and it has the double lock mechanism to open the watch, which is a very secure way to put the watch on the wrists. Now, this watch is 12 millimeters thick, so it is way thicker than the Casio on to my left. So I'm gonna be honest, dimensions don't really tell you, well, how justifiable the price of a watch is. I just told you dimensions just to show you just the comparisons between the watch. As I said, branding does play a major role um, as well as design, as well as making the watch. Some watches out there take months to make and in that case, you'll obviously expect to pay a higher price. The more expensive the watch is, the more complex it was made. And a lot of watch do have very uh, weird complications. The fact that some mechanical watches show you the moon phase function or have a 
a distinctive, let's say, a chronograph or a double balance wheel or just, just I'm giving you random examples of the type of mechanisms that you can find automatic watches. Just imagine the technology that's going to be available for the future. It's just absolutely crazy that a mechanical watch that can sh can show you the day, dates, and without the need of a battery. And that to me is really impressive. Casio here is a dress watch, and without sounding like a snob, um, it's just the feeling when you wear a Rolex. It just it feels really nice, just because of the build quality. It sits comfortably on the wrist, and. All of you know how hairy my wrists are, so when I do wear this watch, because it's polished perfectly on the inside, it's just extremely comfortable. And my only drawback to the watch is its weight. And obviously, a lot of people are probably thinking, well, what do you expect? It's a stainless steel watch. Of course, it's going to be heavy. And it's just something I didn't really... It's something that didn't really bother me in the beginning when I first got this watch. But over the few years... You know, after owning uh, titanium watches such as the Oris Pro Pilot X or the Grand Seiko Snowflake, I slowly started to wear those. And after wearing those, I started feeling the need that I wanted to wear something heavy. So it's a little bit of a weird shift in my life at the moment that I'm deciding between light or heavy watch. And it's just, I believe a lot of watch collectors or enthusiasts or just people that own light watches and heavy watches in terms of weights will certainly know what I'm trying to say is that there isn't really the perfect watch. It's just a watch for every occasion uh, may be special for you. So regardless of what you go for, whether you go for the expensive Rolex Explorer 2 or the cheap Casio here, um, at the end of the day, you're getting a good watch with a good movement. And just remember this, a watch will not define your character. You're simply wearing this because you enjoy it. It makes you happy. Whether you worked hard to get a Casio, you know, I'm, I'm very happy for you, or whether you worked hard to get a Rolex, I'll equally be as happy for you. And you just wear whatever makes you happy and whatever is comfortable for you. And that to me makes a watch ideal for any person. A lot of people will simply just, you know, say that, uh, oh, this watch is cheap, I'll completely neglect it. Or this watch is expensive, I'll completely neglect it. it it's all based on uh, your goals, your budgets, and just simply whatever makes you happy, uh, whatever uh, just, you know, suits your needs, uh, suits your daily life. That to me is a basis of a good watch. And the Casio has a nice leather strap. Very simple, a very thin yet elegant looking watch. And this watch is only $30, believe it or not. However, this watch is 38 millimeters in diameter and that can be a drawback to a lot of people. To me, it is the perfect size. If we compare it to the bigger watch here, which is 42 millimeters, obviously, in full stainless steel, no leather strap and whatnot. This watch is a tank. Very, very heavy watch uh, compared to this, which is very lightweight. Let's put them in the scale and see how much the watch weighs. Placing the Explorer 2 on the scale, you'll see that it weighs 156 grams. Placing the Casio on the scale, you'll see that it only weighs 46 grams, so that is a huge difference in weight. However, lighter isn't always better, just simply because a lot of people will prefer a watch that has a good weight to it. And if a watch does feel light, they'll consider it as cheap. In this case, you're not wrong. This watch is cheap, but in the sense of if you want a good solid weight feel to the watch, you cannot go wrong with the Rolex Explorer 2. But then again, the market prices for these are absolutely crazy. This watch retails, uh, I believe, at eight thousand dollars and has gone up in prices due to them being unavailable at the authorized boutiques and this watch is very easy to get you will see this watch simply being flooded on ebay or amazon or even the official casio store just simply because it is a very budget-friendly watch the majority of people will be able to afford this watch it is a quartz watch as you see the second hand ticking it's not really a bad thing i like quartz watches even though i do not prefer them over automatic watches but I know a lot of people that do. The Explorer 2 is fully automatic and it's not ticking right now simply because the power reserve isn't charged. However, an automatic watch to me is a very good watch simply because it's convenient. All I have to do is just open the crown, wind the watch, and it's, and it's gonna start moving or ticking. Or I just simply shake my wrists um, and the watch will start ticking as well and start moving. 
And that to me is a very convenient uh, thing when it comes to the movement technology. However, I know it's not fair to compare these two watches together, especially one being an automatic watch and the other being a quartz watch. I just wanted to show the main differences to people who just don't understand why watches are expensive or why Rolexes are expensive. And I'm just gonna give you uh, a few pointers here to tell you why this watch is expensive. First of all, the finishing. You will not see a lot of watches at this price point here that have the brushed stainless steel finishing. Or I believe they have their own um, factory which makes their own steel. Now correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below, I am not a uh, Rolex expert when it comes to the material production. But that still doesn't make this the best watch. Another thing that makes this a good watch is simply the build quality. Now ignore the scratches here, I've worn this watch um, quite a lot and it is just a very solid watch. You know, even closing the watch feels very high quality and that to me will tell you why the watch is expensive but it's also not the build quality that still doesn't make the watch um, justifiable for its price points another thing you have to put into consideration is branding this watch is a Rolex and that name comes with a price everyone knows Rolex is recognized by everyone and everyone knows Rolex watches aren't cheap they aren't the most expensive in the world but they aren't cheap um, in some cases, Rolex have been used as a uh, trade-off for currency. If I read a story online that someone was robbed at gunpoint somewhere far away, I'm not really sure where exactly, and he simply traded off his Rolex and it saved his life. And that's just crazy that a watch can save your life. And it's a good thing and a bad thing, but the good thing is that everyone knows Rolex and the bad thing is obviously the price tag. But then again, is it justifiable? I would say yes and no, depending on your budget. Because then again, don't forget that a watch is only expensive depending on how much you're willing to pay for it. This could be pennies to certain people and this could be a lot of money to certain people as well. So you do have to put that point into consideration. And when you are choosing a cheaper watch, which by the way is completely normal because I wear this watch quite a lot. And a lot of people nowadays will say, all right, well, I have a Rolex, why should I wear a Casio? Now, then again, not everyone has that perspective when it comes to wearing a watch because let's not forget at the end of the day, this is just an accessory that tells the time. But in this particular watch here, you know, build quality isn't that up to par. I've actually wanted to change the time once and it got stuck on the date. And I don't know if you can see this, but number 13 isn't actually centered. And I know I may be nitpicking right now, but stuff like this is very important when it comes to watches. The watch needs to be perfect. But then again, if you're only paying $30, don't expect the watch to be that perfect. Because you do get what you pay for. And obviously, quartz watches are generally cheaper than automatic watches. So, what does it mean that the watch is quartz? It simply means it has a battery in it. And I don't want to get too complex because someone might be watching this video and may know nothing about watches. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, don't forget to like this video. I'm extremely grateful for each and every single person that's been subscribing and watching my content. And that to me just makes me uh, want to produce endless content for you guys. And that is all for today, guys. We've reached towards the end of the video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer you as fast as I can. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.